and understand Brought up without fear or respect for the pride His heroes were rebels with their lives and pain And soon he was part of the Belfast God keep you dear and we pray every night and bless all the young men who keep on the fight. When England is funny, united with me, your name Doherty was a truly inspirational person and you get that from talking to people that knew him, listening to his family, the way they speak about him, the way he conducted his life, the way he conducted his personal life, his life in the struggle, his life as a prisoner. It's just um, a complete um, example for people to follow. So I think of young people here today and young people who would be inspired by Kieran's life and that gives me hope and it inspires me as well. So I mean I'm just delighted that there's so many people turned out for this. Like this is a local event here in Andersonstown so it, it's, it's really inspiring to see that many people coming out. So um, th this is the local event. Next Sunday we're going to have the big event in Dungiven which is the national event so um, hopefully we'll have big big numbers out for that I'm sure we will because it's it's the big I, I see it as we've got two big days in the year we've got the the hunger strike commemoration we've got Easter Sunday and those are to me the two big events of the year when people turn out we also um, are going to be welcoming shortly a group of cyclists who make an annual um, cycling trip um, in, in memory of Cairn every year so one year they do it from Belfast to Bally Connell and this year they're doing it from Ballyconnell to Belfast. So we're looking forward to giving them all a big full of us as a cycle in into this um, meeting ground here very shortly. So it's uh, fair play to them for doing that. Well, we, we, we took this cycle on seven years ago. As you know, Kieran was a cyclist on his day, and it was just something that we thought we'd start up and do one, one year, just to raise money for the monuments and stuff. And uh, decided then after that, it was such a success that would keep it going. And uh, over the years, we've been cycling down to Ballyconnell. Uh, the boys and women in Ballyconnell have been very supportive to us, and absolutely fantastic. So this year, we decided to do it in our own force and uh, come back to Cairns Monument, you know. I'm sure the cycle home must be fairly yeah, well, poignant for you. Well, it is. It's, a, it's, a, it's an emotional 
thing when you get it done, you know, it, the crack's good and all the boys, there's good comradeship with them right and down and the, we all have a good laugh and it's, it's, it's a good bit of fun with it, you know, it's not all serious, you know, and yeah. uh, we all enjoy it, you know. It's, uh, it's an honour and a privilege to be asked to chair today's proceedings uh, for in, in memory of Kieran and of course on behalf of the Doherty family. Um, just we, we have a, a guest speaker, Jennifer, here later on. But before we get to the guest speaker, there are a number of leaves that need to be laid. If I can just call the, the, the people who are leading the leaves, uh, Belfast Brigade, first of all, please. Republic of Movement, Anders' turn. The Ballyconnell Memorial Committee. Lanadoon Republic of Movement. The PD Club. And the Rally McCorley Society. Thomas' Town Sinn Féin and Annie from the family. Once again, uh, we're celebrating here uh, outside the Doherty family home. It's always been a, a very dignified uh, commemoration we have every year, small and local, and, and indeed very dignified as it says. And uh, today's main speaker is no stranger to any of us. She's a former prisoner, former councillor, MLA, and uh, recently nominated as junior minister in the, in the new institutions, Jennifer McCann. We call a big bull of bus for Jennifer McCann, please. Okay, Gormel, good evening. Um, a carta agus a comedy agus a clan daherdi. Ta shivsha a falcha and shaw and you. Ta akad and bronach agus in special refreshing. Um, can I just say that it's always an honour um, and a privilege to be asked to, to speak at events like this. Um, I know that, that I mean, most of you here, um, when we come to, to, come to events to honour our, our comrades, our fallen comrades, um, particularly events to honour the hunger strikers. I think that you know we 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 want we we speak, um, but I would like to today um, just do something maybe a little bit different. I just want to because I never had the privilege of knowing Kieran uh, personally, but I feel as if I've known him because I know like other comrades in uh, in this crowd today, when we sat in uh, or when we were in the hitch blocks in an Armagh jail during those protest years and those dark days of the hunger strike. We talked about our comrades and, and each other, and I know Sinead's here, <clears throat> and would have talked about Kieran and Maria, would have talked about Kieran a lot. So we all felt as if we knew them anyway, even though we didn't know them personally. But I just think that, that sometimes, you know, we need, we need to remember just that these were ordinary people, ordinary people 
who had lives and who had family. I'm Kieran, and I have made a few notes here just in case I, I get it wrong, and I'm sure Rosina will keep me right here. Um, Kieran was born in 1955, and he went to local schools here. Um, he had a, a love of local. Uh, he had a love of sport um, when he was growing up as a child. His mother, um, Margaret, and his father, Alfie, were well known in this community, highly respected. And also, he had brothers, Terry, his brother, Michael, Brandon, and the sisters, Maria and Roisin. And they were a very close family. And when Kieran was growing up, he had a love for sport. He had a love for Gaelic football. He had a love for soccer. But he also had a love for cycling. And that's testimony today. This is the seventh time this cycle has been done. And his brother Terry today has done the cycle and he's did it today again. And his testament to his love for cycling, that his, his family and his, his friends do it every year. They cycle from either here down to Ballycollin or vice versa as they did this morning. And that's because Kieran was elected as TD when he was on hunger strike in the H blocks as a Kevin Monaghan TD. And it's worth remembering, I mean, even for all of us starting here today, he got over 9,000 first preference votes during that election. So as I said, Kieran grew up here in Andersonstown. And from by the time he was 15 in 1971, he had seen internment come and go. And it affected his family very uh, uh, closely as well because two of his brothers, Terry and Michael, were both interned. He saw the brutality of the British Army and the RUC on the streets at first hand also. Two of his cousins, Maura Meehan and Dorothy Maguire, were both shot dead in the back of a black taxi on the Falls Road. So he was no stranger to the brutality at first hand, even at a very young age. And people say, you know, and I get sometimes people saying to me, what made you join the IRA? And when we look back and we, we see, we see the times that Kieran was born into at a very young age. Kieran Doherty was first arrested from his family home when he was only 16 years of age. And can you just picture it, 16 years of age, a child being arrested, being taken to a barracks and being interrogated in the way he was uh, by, by the British soldiers and RUC. And he was only 17 years old when he was interned in Long Cash concentration camp. So he was 17 years of age and he was there until November 1975. And he was only out a number of months when he was back, he went back to jail again to do 18 years. And in no short period of time, and this is something, as I say, that, that I had heard about him, because during one of the operations that he wasn't captured on, on the outside, one of his comrades and friends, John McDermott, was shot dead. And Maria Farrell, who later was shot dead in Gibraltar, she was actually arrested in that operation. And when, you know, when I talked, to, as I said, to people that know him, he was a very highly respected, unassuming big fella. That's why he got big dot because of his height. And I mean, he really, really, you know, he was, he was a person who had life to live, his whole life in front of him. So Kieran went into prison. At, this, at that young age, and then he witnessed and suffered at first time the brutality of the hitch blocks of Long Cash. And I looking around again, and I see faces here that went through it. But they, the people here that knew it, went through it. And I think it's very, very important that we do tell our story about that. There's women here from Armagh Prison as well, and we need to tell our story about all that, about our story of how we were impacted upon during this conflict. Because very, very important even for our young people to, to hear that and have that positive role models that they need to have. And as I said, Kieran then went on hunger strike. Kieran replaced Raymond McCreesh who had died in hunger strike. And Kieran went on hunger strike and died on the 2nd of August after 73 days. And can you imagine, he was 25 years of age. 25 years of age. And he went through that agony and that pain and that terror of Dan on hunger strike at that age. So as I say, I mean, I think sometimes we need to, we all need to remember that these people were human people and we need to remember the human cost for people, particularly families like the Doherty family during this conflict. And we need to be carrying on and going through when we're, we are because we have since then, the hunger strikes internationalised our struggle. It put, us, it put the struggle centre stage and there has been a long road that has been travelled from then till now. 
and there has been some there's been some difficult decisions and there has been some courageous decisions made by the IRA and during the peace process by the political leadership. And I think it's very, very important that we go forward and continue that struggle that Kieran and his comrades died for. And I just have to say, even from a personal perspective, comrades like Kieran Doherty and the other comrades that I have seen die during this conflict are never far from my mind and I know they're never far from all our people's mind and no matter what we do in the political process now and we need to move that political process forward we need to remember our fallen comrades but we also need to move it forward we need to go together in this new partnership we need to go get together for our young people and can I just say that our young people today are the most important thing that we have in order for the legacy of this conflict. Because I have young children now, I have young teenage children who were only Kieran's age when Kieran was being arrested, when Kieran was being brutalised, and we all have, and we don't want any of our young children or our young people ever to go through what we had to go through. And there is a new way, there's a different way, and we can do it. And I am convinced that if we stay steady and if we always remember in our hearts our comrades like Kieran, like the other hunger strikers who died and never keep them far from our hearts and never keep those young people and that the, the, the opportunity that we can have for them to bring that sense of justice that we need because we are still challenging the inequalities, those structural inequalities are still there and we still are challenging them. If we keep those young people in our mind and we keep our fallen comrades in our mind, I don't think we'll go far wrong. So today, I'm very, very honoured for to, to speak here today and I would ask you all for to just join me and to, to go forward together and just to make a better future for our people, the future that Kieran and his comrades died for. Thank you. As, as we approach the 31st anniversary of Cairns' death on Thursday the 2nd of August after 73 days in hunger strike in the hits blocks of Long Case, I would like to thank everyone present here this afternoon, paying tribute and honouring him and, and his memory. We must of course always remember and honour everyone who gave their lives for Irish freedom, especially the volunteers from this local area who were friends and comrades of Cairn. The sport shown here today is very heartening and gives our family great comfort and for this we uh, thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Due to failing health, our mother is un unable to be here today but sends her love and best wishes to everyone. I would also like to say a big thank you to everyone who participated in the cycle from Ballycommon to Cairns Monument here in Kameda and to anyone who helped in any way towards its great success. 31 years have passed very quickly and it seems like yesterday when we were gathered around Kieran's bed in the hospital wing of the H blocks and then carried him up Kameda Hill to his home. He was carried by his family, friends and comrades, home and free at last after years of imprisonment and suffering. And there's not a day passes that we don't pray and think of him. When I reflect in the wake of the 31st anniversary of the 1918 hunger strike about the horror of the H blocks and the ultimate sacrifice of Kieran and his nine comrades, giving up their young lives for the sake of their comrades, justice and the real and tangible love for their Republican values, I am truly humbled. In a column to our parents in 1981 in May, from Kearney wrote, the British government has shown again to the world its callousness and vindictiveness towards the Irish people. The hard attitude of the British and the deaths of our comrades only serve to strengthen our resolve. We have no intention of surrendering our principles. I was invited on behalf of our family on the 17th of November last year to unveil a specially commissioned painting featuring the three hundred hunger strikers, Kieran TD for Calvin Monaghan, Bobby Sands MP for Manitou Tyrone and Turns McSweeney TD for Mid Cork, all of whom were elected representatives of the Irish people. The painting now takes uh, pride of place among Republican images and hangs on the Sinn Féin corridor in Leicester House. Kieran was our brother when we all played together in the field behind me here. Uh, we never imagined that in 2011 he would be along with Bobby Sands and Terence McSweeney be immortalised in this way at, in such a historic event. Kieran was the bravest of brave and although he suffered greatly he never complained and it was always in great spirits. He was the greatest brother in the world and we are very proud of him. 
Kim also emphasised he did not want to be taken off the hunger strike until all the five demands were met, saying, The fight for political status was not just a fight for the five demands, but was a fight for the future of Republican struggle against the British. They want to destroy us. The people of Cavan Monaghan who elected Kieran as their TD never had the opportunity to meet Kieran, but in those last days of his hunger strike he spoke to us about the great people of Cavan Monaghan and was sorry he never managed to meet them. You didn't know Kieran, but he knew you. Kieran was as proud of you all here today as you are him. He'd be also proud of what has been achieved to date and of our leaders in this new political phase of the Irish struggle. Kieran was undoubtedly continue to inspire us and keep us on the path towards a united, democratic, peaceful and inclusive Ireland. Kieran died peacefully late on Sunday afternoon, 2nd August 1981, surrounded by his heartbroken and loving family. And just to finish, in a calm, Kieran sent out to his parents during the hunger strike. He wrote, it's not those who inflict the most, but those who endure the most, who shall conquer in the end. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, Stephen. Um, just now then, just we'll we ask for the, the, the colour party to fall out. It's the Maria Farrell uh, Republican Youth Committee. Part of the party. Ira. Well, obviously it is very emotive, not only for myself but for the entire Anderson Town community and with regards to um, the death of, of Cairn almost 31 years ago. And I think it's very important that we do commemorate and celebrate the death, not only of Cairn but of all the other hunger stickers and all the people who have died throughout the conflict. I think today we were joined by um, the Doherty family. Um, every single year they're here, every single year they fill us all with pride. Um, because of their own emotive feelings with regards to the death of their brother um, and their son. I think it's very important that we all be with them and share with the respect that they show to the rest of us and we show that respect back to them as also. Well, I just think you have to look at the, even the coloured party here today, made up of the Maria Farrell Youth Committee and I think as you look at them, how active they are within community politics, they are out on a daily, day and daily basis working for our community and I think that's very important. So people like that show leadership, we have all have to show leadership with regards to to our youth from our areas. In fact, Jennifer McCann um, laboured very much in that in her speech today, and I think that was very important. So we have to work together, young and old, um, to make sure that all of our communities are a better place and a safer place for us all. And I think what we will see next week, next Sunday, um, is the, the large mobilisation with regards to the hunger strike in Dungiven. And I would urge as many people to attend that and to show their respect um, for the people who died on hunger strike back in 1981. I think it's very important and I dare say that you will see large numbers of our youth there at that again showing leadership and courage and walking the streets to commemorate the death of the hunger strikers in 1981.